everyone, this is Haley Morris at Haley's Healthy Options. And if you've been following me on Facebook, I've been talking about how um, my next video is going to be about all my recommend recommendations for my our mind, body, and spirit. So I wanted to get that started here. And I think Ezra's going to make some notes while we're at it. Um, so my physical recommendations, and these are going to be what I feel like um, from my own experience and my own research, I feel like is your best beneficial diets. And these are diets that are really going to enhance your health and well-being. Um, I'm going to uh, basically recommend some timelines on some diets and some specific guidelines on them. Uh, but from my own personal experience recommendations, I'm not a doctor. I just want to make that very clear. So definitely do these diets on your own risk. Consult your doctor if you feel like that's what you need to do. Um, so I'm going to do, start at number five and go down to number one uh, for beneficial diets. My number five is the raw food diet. So I did the raw food diet for... Uh, off and on for about a year, but I did it consistently for about six months. Um, I did do meal prep. Um, I did do um, like sprouted, uh, sprouted, I don't know, uh, greens, <laughs> sprouted greens and sprouted nuts and seeds and all that. So I was definitely getting sufficient um, plant protein. And the reason I do the air quotes is because it's not like meat protein, and I'll kind of get to that later. Um, raw food diet, I feel like, is very good for cleansing. So I feel like, you know, you could do this diet probably up to a year uh, without any negative consequences, I feel like. Um, but, you know, that depends on what your diet was beforehand. Now, if it was a very high-processed uh, type of food, fast food type diet, I feel like this could really benefit you for, for a year term. I wouldn't go over that and... I feel like there's definitely signs to look for um, to cut it off shorter than that. Um, signs would be like not being able to think clearly, being slow on your speech, um, things like that, so the cognitive issues, um, then you would want to cut it, I feel like. Um, when you do the high, high, the high raw food diet, what I feel you need to do in order to make it successful and not damage your health is you need to do high, um, high good fats. So nuts and seeds, avocados, um, coconut oil, if you can throw some of that into it. Um, anything that is going to be uh, high fat in a raw food form. Now, when, I, when I'm talking about raw food right now, I'm not talking about raw meats and stuff like that. You can definitely go on the paleo side and do a high raw food diet. Um, that includes meats. I'm not saying that that would be bad. I wouldn't say that's my number five. I would actually say that would be more like a three. Um, but what I'm talking about is raw uh, seeds, seeds, nuts, uh, vegetables, fruits, uh, those types of things for what I'm talking about for my number five. So if you have any questions about any of these, please leave a comment below with your questions and I'll get back to you with those. Uh, my number four would be a vegetarian diet. Now, I want to uh, definitely clarify that I don't want to advocate vegan at all. I feel like vegan is on the very extreme side. Now, raw food diet is on the ex is a vegan diet and on the extreme side, but there's a I feel like a pretty good dif difference uh, between raw food. Raw food would be cleansing. Vegan is more of what people advocate as a lifestyle diet, and I don't feel like. Um, living long term on a vegan diet is such a smart idea especially because if you do it on a unclean vegan diet which what I mean is like processed soy type of things tofu and all those sorts of uh, high soy foods I feel like that's very bad for your health it also um, can dysregulate your hormones especially estrogen levels and uh, I don't feel like that's a very good diet so Vegetarian diet, the, the reason I like this more than the vegan diet is because you can still have your eggs, you can still have your, your milk products, you can still have your high fat uh, dairy um, and protein uh, type of options without having to get into the soy, um, high soy. So on your vegetarian diet, you wouldn't want to eat um, higher protein and higher fat. And then emphasize vegetables 
and then fruits in moderation. Um, and, you know, just make sure that you're really getting in the super healthy stuff and not the high sugar options when you do a vegetarian diet. And I feel like that a vegetarian diet could be very healthy if you make sure you implement those, um, the egg products, the high fat uh, options that come from the vegetables and the milk products. So like heavy cream, um, eggs, cheese, and when you eat cheese, guys, make sure you do more of the, the hard cheeses, the raw cheeses, the raw milk. I'm not telling you to go on a vegetarian diet and eat like processed forms and soft cheeses and um, you know processed milk and stuff like that. If you're gonna go on a vegetarian diet, do it the most healthy way as possible because I do not think that the vegetarian diet is the best diet option, but I do think that it can be a healthy option if you're wanting to avoid a lot of uh, meat products. You know, maybe you just can't really get over um, the emotional side of uh, killing animals or, you know, whatever your reason may be. Um, like I said, don't feel like it's the best diet, but I feel like that there's a healthier way to go about it. Um, another, my number three diet is the paleo diet, also known as the primal diet. The thing I really like about this diet is I feel like it's a more balanced approach and you're getting rid of the um, non-essential uh, foods like the bread and pastas and cereals and stuff that we don't need in our, in our life at all. <laughs> So I really like the paleo diet because it really takes you back to um, our ancient ancestors and what they were really eating at the time. First of all, they were eating extremely seasonally, which I love. So, um, and they were moving a lot. They were moving a lot uh, from um, colder climates to warmer climates. And if they couldn't move from colder climates, then they were eating a lot of meats. So this is kind of where the paleo orientation goes to um, you know, there's where the grains would be, there's actually a veggie base. Um, and then you have your uh, high fats and your meats. And then you have a moderation of fruits. And more, And if you think of fruits, you would want to eat more seasonally with that. And then you have, you know, your herbs and spices and stuff like that, where your sugar and oils would go on your um, modern day uh, food pyramid. So it's Pretty interesting if you research the paleo diet, there's a lot on it right now. Um, but really what you wanna think about is the healthiest way to go about it is eat um, uh, healthy fats, healthy proteins, and healthy vegetables, and really focus on those aspects. Then eat some fruit in moderation seasonally, um, and then eat, you know, just pile on the herbs and spices because those are all medicinal. Um, and if you add them to your foods, then you're getting a lot of medicinal benefits from those. So my number two is the keto diet. Now, right now, a lot of people are thinking that the keto diet is this big like fad or whatever, but <laughs> it's funny because it's just another diet. And if you want to think about, there's so many diets and like information about diets. So uh, you can't necessarily call one a fad or uh one not a fad. I guess you could is like the fad would be like, oh, it's the most popular diet right now, but that's not what I'm going for. So the thing I really like about the keto diet is you can burn fat literally forever if you follow this. And there's stuff I don't like about the keto diet, and I'll kind of get into it, that with my number one. But for the most part, I really like the keto diet. It is a high um, fat diet. And these are the good fats. So there is such thing as good fat. And you can look these all up on Google. I'm not going to dig into these um, because I kind of still have a lot to go on this video. But it's a high good fat diet. So you want to emphasize your fats on this diet. This is going to be your bottom of the food pyramid, basically. Okay, so you're still going to want to um, do vegetables, but you're more emphasis on the fat over vegetables. And then the protein is actually more in moderation, and then the fruit is pretty much non-existent at this point. And then obviously you want your um, herbs and spices for the medicinal properties of those. So I really love the keto diet because basically you're getting into ketosis, um, which is where instead of your insulin burning uh, sugar, you're actually going to start burning fat within your body and within your food, and you're going to get into this thing called ketosis which actually starts to run your brain and everything. So if you look into keto, it's really interesting, all the science background with that. 
Um, I actually took a course uh, through Mark Sisson, and I've read his keto book, and it's just really incredible, guys. So check out Keto if you really just want to, like, up your gains um, metabolically and a muscle and, I mean, everything, uh, brain function. If you really just want to run on that primal ultra uh, primal optimal level, then you want to go with ketosis um, in the keto diet. So look into that. Now, my number one diet is kind of, here's, here's kind of what I want to say with the number one, is that on ketosis, you can actually develop a, um, what they want to call metabolic inflexibility. You won't be able to be as flexible in your metabolism after so long of keto. So kind of like be aware of that. If you are good with staying on a keto diet your whole entire life, um, then go full-blown keto. It, it will benefit you health-wise, um, mind, body, and spirit. Um, but if you're wanting to have the metabolic flex flexibility, so say, you know, you go, you're going to go ketosis for uh, most of your life, but then, you know, you decide that, well, I'm going to eat you know, Thanksgiving, everything at Thanksgiving, who cares? Well, that actually might do a lot of uh, metabolic damage. So you want to be really careful with that. You you might have huge insulin spikes um, that are just really bad uh, for your health just because you your body just doesn't know how to process that sugar anymore. So there is a metabolic flexibility um, issue there. You can kind of, I think Rob Wolf has a uh, has an article about this. If you check out robwolf.com, he kind of goes over like how metabolic flexibility uh, could be an issue with the keto diet. But I'm not hating on the keto diet. I really love the keto diet. I feel like it has tons of benefits. Um, but we do live in this modern age where there's just temptations everywhere. So if you feel like you're just not a strong-willed person when it comes down to it, um, you want the health benefits of ketosis, but um, but you want that metabolic flexibility, then just implement ketosis, you know, uh, a few times a year. Do it more as a cleanse instead of an overall diet, and you'll be able to maintain that metabolic flexibility. Um, so my number one diet saying that is having metabolic flexibility, and that would be implementing all of these diets all the time and that's so like to me that this is one thing I'm working on this year is just to be um metab like let my metabolism be flexible um stay on the healthy path be healthy um but have a balance and I'm not saying like like let's eat a bunch of grains like I don't want you to eat grains at all if you if you don't have to the only time I'm gonna eat grains is if like I have like a pizza once in a while or something, um, which I would rather pick gluten-free, honestly, because I know the severe health uh, risk with eating gluten. So, uh, but having metabolic flexibility, letting your body be able to uh, deal with anything that you decide to throw its way is a good thing. Um, so I would recommend you implementing all of these diets together, doing a high raw food. You should be eating a lot of different salads. You should be eating fruit seasonally, uh, especially like um, beneficial antioxidant berries like blueberries, raspberries, uh, currants. I mean, there's just so many good uh, medicinal fruits that you should definitely be implementing on the season. Um, the vegetarian diet. I feel like the vegetarian diet is great uh, when you maybe feel like you're just eating a lot of protein and, and you just feel like Maybe you're not digesting it very well. You know, there's people that can't digest protein very well or they just have too much built up in their body and um, they're just kind of feeling icky about it. And that's fine. Like implement that uh, vegetarian diet, kind of do a cleanse with your body, uh, get more fruits and vegetables, emphasis on the vegetables, uh, fruits and vegetables through your diet, you know, and some high fat and some eggs, which is like the perfect food. Um, and, you know, just implement that vegetarian diet here and there. Uh, the paleo diet, I mean, this is just, if you wanted to ditch all the diets, go with this one because it honestly is the most balanced approach um, that implements all of these diets and keeps you super healthy and you have the, and you can implement the high fat with the keto diet um, and maintain that metabolic flexibility and 
totally ditch those uh, grains and the processed junk and sugar and stuff like that. So paleo diet, um, implement that. And then obviously the keto diet, you know, go you can go high fat here and there. Um, get into ketosis for a while and then jump out if you want or just stay in it, you know. So really just mixing all of these to diet, these diets together, I feel like is the best option overall when it comes to diet. So I hope that was informational for you on the diet in, but now I'm going to jump into um recommended doctors. So let's just say that you have to go to the doctor. I hate going to the doctor and I won't unless I absolutely have to. But um, for and like I said, not a doctor. So it's all on you. Um, so what I'm saying is um, holistic alternative doctors, functional medicine doctors. I feel like these are your top doctors before you go into a conventional atmosphere. Try to get insurance that covers these. If you can afford self-pay, like I really do think that this is your best option. They're going to go with actually your root causes of your issues. Or, you know, are your hormones out of whack? Are you just eating a crappy diet that doesn't fit like what your body needs? Um, are you not moving enough? Um, there's just so many things that these doctors are actually going to look at and then help you implement uh, procedures that actually fit your whole being uh, together. And they, they look at it all and they're not just trying to cover up your symptoms with a prescription. You know, they're actually doing some work here. Um, I know a doctor personally that I've shared with you guys many times and his name is Ken Berry. And what's really cool about Ken Berry is he actually has a e-visit option. So you can, just like you're looking at me in the screen, uh, you can be one-on-one -on -one with him, talk about everything that's going on with you, and he can actually help you um, through the screen. And what's really cool is you don't have to leave your house for one. So you don't have to get anybody else sick. Uh, it can be super private. You know no one's going to hear you except for your family maybe. Um and he knows what he's talking about. And that's the most awesome thing when it comes to a doctor is they actually do their own research. They know what they're talking about. Kim Berry also has a YouTube channel. Um, I think it's youtube.com slash Kim Berry. Either or, go to YouTube, put Kim Berry, uh, comment MD, and you're going to find him. He has all kinds of videos about ketosis, about paleo diets, um, about uh, insulin uh, foods that spike your in insulin. I mean, everything. So definitely check him out if you want a professional doctor advice because he actually does have a license. <laughs> so, so go talk to him about some things if you don't believe me. Um, so an another thing is, oh, I wanted to talk about recommended uh, daily supplements that I think that you should take uh, as a health coach. Um, I think everyone should be taking vitamin D3 at 500 or 5,000 IU or higher. Um, and these are daily. Magnesium, we have, we used to get our magnesium from the soil. And because of the damage that we're doing to our soil with monocrops, um, the conventional farming, um, we're pulling a lot of nutrients out of there and we're putting down basically man made nutrients. And it's just not coming across to us like it used to. So, Getting magnesium into your diet would be a great idea. I like to use the brand called Calm. Um, I plan on like having this stuff on my website soon where people can go to all my recommendations um, of products and services and stuff that I love. So you can just go in there and click. Um, and all that's kind of getting worked out at the moment. I do have some stuff on there. So if you want to go to my website, I'll link it below and you can go to the services and products I love and then kind of dive in there. I am affiliated with uh, some of these, not all of them, but some of these products and services. This just helps me do my job, um, helps me support my family. So, but I do want to let you know I am affiliated. Um, and then another thing, oh, eating liver. So you probably don't like that if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, but Liver uh, over all multivitamins, all the food that you could possibly eat uh, in a day setting, liver um, has the most abundance of nutrition, uh, vitamins, and minerals in liver, guys. So um, I wouldn't eat it uh, every day, but I would definitely eat it a few times a week if you can. Um, these are going to be a lot cheaper options. Like eating liver is probably the cheapest option of meat and you're going to get more benefits over just eating meat. 
So uh, liver is a great option to get all of your nutrition, nutritional needs across the board. Uh, Google it. Look up, look up the nutritional benefits of liver. It is incredible. Um, look up the vitamin percentages on those. It's seriously incredible. So if you can eat liver, uh, make sure you get pasture raised so you know they're uh, raised well and they actually have those nutritional benefits. Conventional is going to be great too. So if you can't get pasture raised, definitely um, go with the conventional and eat some liver once in a while. That's going to be better than any dietary supplement anybody can give you. Um, for vegans and vegetarians, you really need to emphasize your B vitamins. You're not going to get it through your fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds. I don't care what they tell you. You're not going to get it like you will if you're eating meat. It just doesn't transfer through your body um, like it does when you eat meat. So you really need to uh, get some supplements for B vitamins. Um, you also need to get supplements for zinc and for iron. And there's some others that I'm probably totally missing that you're also missing in your diet. So make sure you research if you're gung-ho on vegetarian and vegan diets, make sure you're getting the nutritional gaps filled in where you need to. And um, those are going to be through supplements. Um, if you're going to have a multivitamin instead of eating liver, um, then I suggest that you do your research on multivitamins. There are vitamins um, in multivitamins that actually don't have the correct uh, basically transcripts. Okay, so they don't have the they don't have the correct herb or uh, vitamin that transfers into your body to actually benefit you, but it actually can harm you. So you want to look for a whole food uh, herbal supplements that have the, the correct ingredients that will transfer into your body and actually benefit you instead of harm. Uh, so just do your research on that. Um, I've read about it and I just can't remember the details right now uh, to tell you. I, I just know the basics. So uh, basically go look at those, um, those multivitamins and uh, make sure you do research on this. So the last two things that I want to go over is um, exercise recommendations and spiritual and mental recommendations. So exercise five through one. Um, number five, moderate movement often. So just getting up, not sitting on your couch all the time, just moving. You know, you might have a waitress job. That's a great example of moderate movement. Just walking around a lot, doing house chore chores. If you live on a farm, doing farm chores. Um, just not sitting very often. So that's my number five. If you can't do anything, that's what I recommend you doing is just moderate uh, movement and exercise. Number four is jogging. And when I say jogging, I mean like finding out uh, what your, um, your heart level or, uh, sorry, heartbeat moderation is where, where you're not over intensely jogging. Uh, you're not un, un intensely jogging, but you're actually in this moderate level and you're not going for too long. Um, you can actually start a, um, basically too much of a stressor on your body and it, it will uh, mess up your insulin levels and you start to actually gain fat and, um, just mess up your cortisol and stuff where jogging can be harmful. So don't overdo the jogging or the running, um, but just do a moderate level of jogging um, as a number four. Um, or you can do biking, which is low impact. And I recommend biking more because I feel like you can actually uh, maintain that activity level um, better than you can with jogging. Um, be and also you can just cruise, you know, when you feel like you're starting to get out of breath. Just really stay in touch with your body and how you're feeling when you're doing these jogging and biking. And don't overdo it, guys. This is, I feel like jogging and biking is more like of an enjoyment exercise. And that's how you should go about it. <clears throat> Number three is HIIT work workouts and heavy weightlifting. So HIIT workouts are something that um, is very short. So usually right around 15 minutes, sometimes 20 uh, you're doing uh, high circuit training. So you're doing a lot of jumping and you're doing push-ups. You're doing, I mean, just high, high intensity exercises for a very short period of time. So this really just uh, starts to burn fat, um, get those, start regulating your insulin levels. And um, then the combination with the heavy weight lifting uh, is great for your body. It really uh, just promotes tonus and stuff in your body where it's just 
it really regulates overall hormones and cortisone levels and stuff when you do exercises like this because you're not overextending the exercise. You're not spending an hour in the gym, but you're really just uh, focusing on some high intensity movement um, that just regulates everything and burns your fat and then doesn't overdo it where it's messing up your cortisol. Hope that makes sense. I feel like I kind of rambled on that, but um, number two is my favorite, which is CrossFit. I feel like this has a really good mental uh, shift because it makes you feel like you, uh, first of all, you're competing with people, so that's good. Um, you're, uh, high, you're doing a high intensity workout, you're doing weightlifting workout. Um, I feel like uh, CrossFit can be a little long. I feel like an hour, an hour and a half is too long. But uh, overall, I feel like it's going to benefit you, uh, your health and wellness. So CrossFit is definitely a uh, winner for me. But the number one, I would say, is primal essential movement. So these are things that if you went out in nature and you were thinking about your ancient ancestors, these are the exercises that you would be doing. So you're going to be doing um, squats. You're going to be doing pull-ups. You're going to be, uh, you know, doing uh, planks. You're going to be doing push-ups. You're going to be doing sprints once in a while. And not sprints all the time. You're going to be do, doing some uh, light jogging. You're going to be walking a lot. These are primal essential movements. This is my number one. Um, so you should be doing sprints every every seven to ten days. Um, jumping squats, squats, planks. Um, you know, all these things that I've already mentioned. I won't go back through again. <laughs> and so my last recommendation is uh, spiritual and mental. So what I like to do to keep my... Uh, spiritual and mental well-being thriving is I like to listen to motivational speeches. Um, you can find these on YouTube. Just put motivational speeches and there's just tons of them and they really are inspiring guys and they get you motivated and pumped to go do something and sometimes you need that so I really love that. Um, any kind of uh, positive thinking or uh, doing books. So anything that makes you want to do something um, in a positive mindset. Um, that's, that's book related and just sitting and relaxing and reading a book is so good for your mind. Uh, especially if you challenge yourself with that book, if it's something like with big words that you don't really understand or a different language that you kind of have to study while you're reading it, uh, or just a whole new thinking, um, paragram, like really making yourself think outside of your box. So those are good things for your mental development and spiritual development. Podcasts. I really love podcasts. Uh, I, I personally have a podcast called The Mindful Mommy, so check that out. It's uh, www.themindfulmommy.podbean.com, and uh, it's just health and wellness and spirituality and whatever I decide to talk about that day, so so check that out, and then there's just tons of different podcasts. Uh, I'll probably have a podcast list on my recommendations because I really love podcasts that much, Um uh, one's called there's one called entrepreneur on fire that I really love he uh, he's pretty awesome when it comes down to it um, bold mom is another good one uh, there's just a, a lot of different ones oh and we just had Alice or sorry <laughs> my goodness Amber Chalice on my podcast the other day and she is from the liberated woman and she's really cool so you have to check her out too um, and then just enjoyment activities, things that make you enjoy life. You know, sometimes we can get into just the constant daily things that we have to do all the time. And you really just need to get out outside of your house or outside of your workplace or wherever you're at that you just feel like you're constantly doing it. Um, and it just gets mundane and boring. Um, and so just get out and do something that you love to do, that you used to love to do, and uh, basically treat yourself uh, that that wording. And sometimes I laugh when I hear that, but <laughs> but uh, treat yourself and uh, go watch a movie or go get a massage. I just got one yesterday. It was great, and she did my nails. So relax, place in Kokomo. Go there, um, and just you know do something that you enjoy, even if it's eating that chocolate bar that you shouldn't eat. Sometimes just do it. You know, just enjoy yourself. Say hi. She's about to get grumpy, guys. Um, last couple things before she starts throwing a thing. Um, prayer, silent prayer, meditation, uh, just getting yourself into the present moment and um, thinking good things, guys. Uh, negativity can really bring you down. So the way 
uh, getting out of that mental mindset before it destroys your happiness is a great thing through meditation and prayer. And then uh, stretching and movement. Just getting up and moving and getting some vitamin D from the sunshine and um, getting some stretching in to calm your tension. So that's all, guys. I got to go. She's getting grumpy. She needs a nap. See ya. Thank you. And leave any comments if you need any help below.